Welcome everybody to our 103rd webinar of our series here at AIM Sports. Uh, this is the 29th of 2021 that we've been doing, uh, having a great time with these, learning so much, uh, so many things that we've been able to cover and we've got a uh, probably the next seven or eight uh, uh, already planned out around some, um, some pretty detailed data analysis uh, techniques uh, and always, in, always you know, bringing in uh, different techniques inside the software to do that, uh, uh, somewhat of what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about today with Peter Krauss, our co-host, um, the, the, the quick analysis of, of some data files that uh, some people don't know are there. And if you, um, uh, when you have a SmartyCam video, um, when, with the advent of Ray Studio 3 analysis, uh, they changed some firmware in our, in our SmartyCam HD um, uh, cameras, where on that little SD card is not just the video, not just the MOV file, but embedded into that MOV file, that video file, is, uh, is the data, um, data pieces of data, the, the, the channels where we can actually view those channels, even if you didn't have a name data logger or if the data logger, something happened to that file. Uh, we have a lot of smarty cams in cars that uh, maybe don't have a name logger. It's a standalone camera or it's a, you know, in IndyCar, we have, uh, you know, we have smarty cams in all of the, all of those data loggers. If a coach wants to grab that card and open up the, the video file and have some data traces of what they had placed on there as far as graphical elements, you've, uh, you've got something like we're going to look at today. So just want everybody to even understand that. Peter's going to explain it a little bit. Uh, we're going to have a good time and, um, and, and learn, uh, learn a number of different things here today. So I'd like to, uh, first introduce Peter. He's, he's, um, He's a longtime AIM sports dealer, um, talks about it since 2010, since the dark ages, it's a, you know, more or less, right? Been around for a while. Uh, but the most important piece of this is he's a you know, six, this is his sixth time he's uh, been an AIM sports webinar co-host and we appreciate that a lot. Peter, give us a, give us a little bit more background on you and then uh, and kind of where we're gonna head today. Well, Roger, thank you so much. Um, it's, a, it's an honor and always a pleasure to be with you. On these AIM webinars, I think they provide a tremendous amount of information and a tremendous amount of value to the people that use this stuff every day and people who, even more importantly, to people who don't frequently use this. I think one of the major issues uh, that we all have is there's never enough time at the racetrack to do everything you need to do. And for a lot of us, who work, um, uh, who this is their vocation, uh, not their avocation, this is their job, not a hobby. Um, it becomes even more important because some of us are charging money uh, for results and we don't always guarantee those results. Obviously you can't, you're not the one that's pushing the pedal and turning the wheel. Uh, but uh, what a coach and instructors generally do is help define or distill areas um, where a driver might exploit in order to improve their performance without significantly adding risk. Um, nobody wants to uh, crash their car. Nobody wants to load it back onto the trailer in pieces. Uh, the key is to add speed and get quicker without adding danger or risk uh, more than, than a significant amount. And a thoughtful approach can really pay dividends if you have the proper tools. My background was I was a professional mechanic for 25 years and I uh, worked primarily on Italian cars in uh, the Eastern United States. And uh, I love historic racing and vintage racing. Uh, my focus has been on historic racing for some time. And in the last 10 to 15 years, it's uh, grown to uh, so that I spend a lot more time with modern cars. But I sold my preparation shop and my mechanic business uh, 15 years ago. I had 12,000 square feet, uh, a couple of guys, a couple of tractor trailers running around all over the country. And um, when I sold the business, I try, had to figure out what I wanted to do, and that was work with drivers. Um, I have been a big proponent of simple data acquisition logging systems and video uh, for 20 years. And one of the first video systems uh, that I came into contact with was the AIM David, which was a multi-camera system that also 
uh, took in uh, data and uh, it was a, a very complicated, uh, a pretty complex device uh, that a lot of professional teams uh, adopted in the 2004, 2005 range. Um, and and it, was, it required the ministrations of a dedicated crew member to keep it going and set it up and work it. Um, in 2009, um, the Smarty Cam came out and that was a, another great, great tool. So uh, my whole business has focused on working with drivers one-on-one -on -one and incidentally providing them the tools to, uh, from a variety of different manufacturers, but primarily AIM and, and a few others, uh, to be able to review and analyze a driver's performance. I'm focused primarily, almost solely on the driver. I don't really spend a lot of time on uh, the car. I don't spend a lot of time uh, looking for engineering solutions. I'm trying to help the driver uh, find and focus the, on their areas of exceptional performance. We'll talk about that uh, because if they do more of that, uh, they will go quicker, more consistently, and with less trouble. Um, but I've really enjoyed having a toe in almost every uh, aspect of, of uh, amateur motorsports in uh, North America in terms of being able to see how these things are used and how people use them. And I got to tell you, this Race Studio 3 analysis beta, with the ability to bring up side-by-side -side video with data in the same window and have everything dynamically linked, and Roger's going to talk about that a lot, is, is key for a successful interaction between myself and a driver that I might be working with. And also, what's really good is a majority of people, I believe, can be taught and learn how to um, coach themselves. And we all know uh, that, that we're really interested uh, in, in visual things. We can, we can accept that information and intake that information very quickly. Uh, but I think that the most exciting thing that I've uh, had come out of AIM recently is, is Race Studio 3 Analysis Beta with this uh, exactly what we're going to do today. Um, next slide, and, and let's talk a little bit more about the history um, of this. Um, this is the original Smarty Cam HD. This came out in 2012 with the Solo 2 DL on the left-hand side. It was a simple, easy package. I think when the Solo 2 DL came out and when the Smarty Cam, the standard definition unit, came out before that, all of a sudden, uh, the Smarty Cam was one of the first devices to be able to render information on the background of the video in real time. So all of a sudden you had temperatures and pressures on the background. You had throttle position and brake position if those channels were provided by the logger to the Smarty Cam on the background of the video ready to play 20 seconds after you came back into the paddock. And this saves a lot of time because people can pull their card, take a quick look and see what they did. So much of what driver coaching is all about is validating performance. Most drivers will remember between 85 and 90% of the lap that they did. Uh, and, and when they review it on the video, we'll, we'll see exactly as they remember doing. However, 10 to 15% they'll miss an apex or they'll be late on throttle and it'll jump out at them as being different than what they thought they were doing in the car. And this is why this instrumented or intelligent video, video with metrics on the background of the video is so important. Um, next slide. So the, the, the thing that we were talking uh, about, you know, I, this is my, uh, Sports 2000 car, it is a Ford uh, four-cylinder powered car. It's a two-seater. It has a fully aluminum monocoque. Uh, it's great racing. This is a picture taken on the grid at Coda by Michael DePleco, who's a wonderful photographer friend of mine. And, um, and it shows clearly not only in the yellow circle, but it also shows uh, the... Oops. Oops. That's not what I meant to do. Uh, let me, I, I can, I, I can, I can good. fix that. I can we're fix that. Fine. There so you go. The yellow uh, is the, is the ubiquitous smarty cam that, that I carry all the time, every time. Um, I use this stuff myself. I am uh, 
uh, not a, a worse critic, but uh, but I do think, you know, I, I, I see, you know, Kyle Watkins talked about how his brain shuts down when he's in the car. I work <laughs> with a lot of drivers who are 100% focused on driving the car. They come back and they can't tell me what they did, let alone what lap they did it on. So the, the most important thing to, to realize here is to have a record and you have that record of intelligent video. I love my car. I love the racing. Uh, it, is, uh, it is not uncommon for the first couple of rows of a race grid uh, in my class of car to have drivers with a cumulative total of more than a hundred years of racing experience. And, and we, you know, it's a high speed chess match is what it is. And the racing and driving and driving uh, well is a, is a intellectual exercise. It, to me, there is, there's not really a lot of bravery about it other than uh, becoming comfortable being slightly uncomfortable as my friend Ross Bentley says, but, but this is really important. And um, I just want you to know that, that I do love these cars and, uh, and I spend a lot of time in production based cars GT cars. Uh, I've, I've not raced a great deal of open wheel myself uh, because I don't want to touch another tire and go flying. But uh, but the purpose built sports racing cars are are lovely, and I've had a great fortune to drive a couple of Group C cars, IMSA cars, uh, WEC cars. Um, been driving a LMP three car, the Nissan V8 powered uh, prototype for the IPC and IMSA. And uh, and these things are really really a lot of fun. So let's they are the they are a gorgeous car. The line is uh, the lines on it are, are beautiful. And I I've always thought of them as yeah yeah you've got that bodywork around it, but uh, but with the aluminum tub and all that, it's really it's really as much a open wheel car as it is a you know you take that bodywork off and it's really an open wheel car with with the fiberglass around it, right? So, that's right. That's that's what's so fun. As close as you can get to a to an open wheel car that way. That is. There you go. Most majors on the background are, are actually included nowadays. And that's where we kind of want to focus a little bit on the technical side of our discussion today is this. And then, of course, we're going to get in and, uh, and do some actual data analysis with data that we're talking about. Yeah. So, so one of the things that we need to make sure of is uh, the, the total focus of today's webinar is on simple data. And by necessity and by technical limitation, there are only certain channels that come through that can be accessed using the process that we're going through today. And also the refresh rate of those channels is markedly less than the data system is capable of logging. So at some point, uh, perhaps in the evening or between events uh, or after the event, or even if you have a long lay, uh, layover in the middle of the day between sessions, you can bring in the uh, data from the logger and the video from the camera and marry them in Race Studio 3 analysis beta for a much more detailed approach. And I think, you know, I, I think folks like uh, Matt Romanowski and James Colborn do a wonderful job of that. Um, I don't have personally and, and for my purposes, I don't have enough time uh, to, to do that frequently. And where I really need to be able to do is to access what the people did on track at any given point in any given lap, and then compare it to uh, better performances or other drivers uh, or themselves. It is possible to use this technique that we're going to talk today, uh, even if you don't have comparative data, to find information uh, that is rich in your collected data that shows uh, so that you can find areas of exceptional performance, review what you did to achieve them, and know that you can go out and do them again. This is a big head game. A lot of this coaching business and moving forward, uh, the, the biggest frustration every driver has is that the drivers uh, go out and resolve to do something different, pound around, come back in and are disappointed and frustrated that their lap time isn't any better. And here we have the tools from the single SD card that comes out of any Smarty Cam HD. Uh, you know, you can really make a big difference. 
Kyle Watkins talks about uh, the theoretical best lap, which I think is one of the greatest tools in the world. Is it possible to do a theoretical best best lap? Generally not, uh, because you're going to go through one split quicker than you can negotiate optimally the next split. But it shows you areas of exceptional performance. Uh, one of my first instructors was Skip Barber Racing School senior instructor, a guy named Bruce McGinnis. Bruce McGinnis talked about uh, moments where a driver got everything right. And that was flowing brilliance. Moments of flowing brilliance where somebody nailed a corner. J uh, James Colborn talked a little bit about this last time and about uh, last week when he talked about his improvement. And he knew that he uh, nailed it and he could come back and look at it and, and do it again if he was able to see what he did. Let's go to the next slide. But the the couple of things I'd like to chat about, take it, pull in a couple of questions here before we uh, before we yeah. move on. The um, uh, Kyle asked early on, and I think it was maybe even answered uh, maybe in the chat, but I wanted to talk about it here. Is what you said about Smarty Cams true? Uh, what we what what I was talking about at the time was that, that these these data elements are going to be included not only as as a uh, overlays on on the video but uh, as data files that, that we're going to demonstrate here in a, in a minute with live data uh is that true for the older sd cameras the stuff that was uh, very very early uh, the very first generation and uh the answer to that is yes but uh with a big but there, there was uh there was some data files in those but that's only going to be available to you in uh in race studio 2 and the the but the bigger picture is Ever since we've had Smarty Cam HD, that most everybody is aware of, uh, there have not there has not been data included. So it's only on the HD ones that are, are the data that we're talking about here today. So uh, uh, your customers that have the older bullet looking uh, uh, Smarty Cam ones, um, that data is uh, is not going to be available to you in Ray Studio Three. The is the data trace in Smarty Cam video firmware dependent from Tice. Um, it, if you have current firmware, you're going to be okay. It's going to be in there. There, it, for quite some time, we have had the the, the firmware has been uh, set up to allow the data to be, be be logged this way. It's certainly not the last four or five uh, firmware versions. It's farther back than that. But if you have never updated your firmware, uh, it's just a good idea at this point to update your uh, Smarty Cam. If you're going to be bringing Smarty Cam video and data into Ray Studio 3, you should have the current firmware. And uh, uh, it would have to be very, very old before it didn't before it didn't work. So you should be OK. And then Tice has one more question that we're, uh, I'll, I'll briefly mention here, but we'll show it in the data. The data in the video is from a GPS antenna. That not necessarily true. It could be from a from an ECU based throttle position brake pressure. But uh, the point of your question is still good. Uh, the data in the video is from multiple sources, including the GPS antenna. What uh, what is that sampling rate? Is is it a slower rate? And it is. And we'll uh, we'll actually chat about that. Uh, it is being. Um, the data files that we are creating that come across with your Smarty Cam are at a lower uh, sampling rate, which we will look at. Uh, so if you're gathering your throttle at 20% at uh, 20 samples per second in the data logger, you're probably going to see it at, at uh, six samples per second in the in the the data files we're going to talk about, and we'll, and we'll show that as, as well. And, so. and just just to add on that, the 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 original standard definition Smarty Cam did generate SMC files, which were compressed zipped files that included the data uh, from the logger that was attached to the, to the camera. And, and the purpose of that uh, was primarily as a transport media rather than being able to be integrated like it is with the HD. Uh, that's, that's super important, but uh, let's go to the next slide. Come on, baby. There we go. Just coming. There she is. Okay. <laughs> the the well, interesting thing about goodness. what we're doing here today is is Peter Peter had the idea that you know a week ago we had a um, a uh, a webinar with James Coburn where he talked about uh, his own example of using uh, Smarty Cam video in Ray Studio Three the beta software and that um, and how he kind of set it up and, and the process he followed and Peter decided that he would use 
just take that to the next level, the next step of some of the stuff that he does. So we're using some of James's screen captures from before. Peter's going to talk about what he might do, just uh, uh, the, the next steps beyond that. And then we'll get into some live data with some of one of Peter's uh, clients and we'll go from there. Well, I'm a super, super big booster of, of James's educational efforts, of his videos, of the way that he explains things, and particularly his simplistic, basic, and highly effective approach to analyzing what happened, where it happened, and why it happened. And the very first thing that I heard out of Roger's mouth, the first time that we uh, my company hosted a name seminar at Virginia International Raceway in 2011 or 2012 was uh, Roger defining this idea of what happened, where did it happen, and why did it happen. And for years, we've been hobbled by the fact that we can't really definitively say why something happened because we don't have access to what happened outside the car. We don't know why a particular graph trace might have an anomaly in it unless we can see the fact that the driver is about to run out of road or coming up onto other traffic or, you know, having difficulty with a shift, although that could come up in RPM information if you had that. So the, the whole idea here was the adding of video to this, having all of this information dynamically linked from the cursor uh, in panels one and two on the strip charts to the video, to the map on the lower left and the actual measure numbers themselves on the top left-hand side give you a much fuller picture and a better context of information between the two. Getting back to uh, one thing Roger said, I have successfully gone back and uh, I have somewhere between, I don't know, 12 and 15 terabytes of AIM and other video and data uh, that I've accumulated over the last 15 years. And I'm at the track most weeks and, and I have had uh, gone back and successfully taken SmartyCam HD videos and been able to do this successfully back uh, two or three years. So I, I have information back from 2018 that works. Sometimes it's not perfectly synced. Sometimes the information isn't coming through exactly the way it should. But current firmware updates always fix that, have always fixed that for me. Um, and I look after a lot of different cameras and, and that sort of thing. But I, getting back to this particular slide, I love the fact that we can see and we can answer what happened uh, by the uh, strip chart in, in uh, panel one, the time difference, the time compare, um, where it happened, uh, basically looking at the uh, strip chart just above it, where you have white space between the blue and the red speed traces. Uh, that's gonna be the big uh, single area. And then why it happened uh, by looking at a car placement and looking at what his the driver's control inputs. The driver manipulates the car by three control inputs, uh, basically throttle, brake, and steering. And um, you know, a lot of people talk about line. A lot of people talk about utilizing the full width of the track unless there is a compelling reason not to, which is always a good idea. Uh, and really necessary if you're if you're driving to the capability and the limits of the car and yourself. But beyond that, if you are already following the line, how do you get better? Well, in James' particular case, right where the cursor is right now, what he did was he braked a little later and less and rolled more speed into the corner. And I mean, he rolled a lot more speed into the corner because on the left hand side, <laughs> look at that. I mean, this is this is marvelous because again, what, what he's able to do is incrementally creep up on that. And the fact that he has done this, if he has done it once, he can do it again. So in my mind, this panel is rich with information. It has no concrete driver input channels on it. It has no throttle position, no brake pressure, no engine RPM. It just has GPS-based information, which is why you have on the top left-hand side on the profile video GPS only. And this is a profile that, that uh, James built and shared uh, last week. And the, the thing is that uh, this, in my mind, 
has all the information I need to help somebody go faster. Because what I'm trying to do is have the, the driver jettison the 80% of the lap that they're doing well, areas in the time compare that are uh, horizontal or near horizontal, find and focus the areas of better performance, specifically right where, uh, right where Roger is, is pointing in sector four, and again, uh, end of sector nine, beginning of sector 10, and then at the very end of the lap. Um, and we can see that uh, those are the three areas that James's attention should be focused on to optimize in this, in this particular way. And the GPS longitudinal acceleration is a direct end result of the driver control inputs. And that's why I don't get stressed out the fact that I don't have brake pressure sensor off of a 2015 Mustang. Uh, I might have throttle position, so I'll use what I have. But the point is, here in this particular case, I can get pretty much all the information I need right away uh, to get good stuff. Now, let's look at, uh, if we look at sector four, and we look at the GPS longitudinal acceleration, you'll actually see uh, the red uh, higher, vertically higher, uh, right smack dab in the middle, right there. Now that you would look at that and you would say, well, the driver's going to more power uh, than he is on the blue lap. Well, it just so happens that he is already going much, much quicker and the car may very well not accelerate uh, or accept that acceleration level uh, with the, the total amount of grip being required from the tires. So just because, uh, try not to look at one measure, try to look at uh, a couple of measures together to draw a broader context and get a more valid view of what's going on. Let's go to the one next. of the reasons that we use that saying that, uh, you know, what happened, where did it happen? Why did it happen is you may see that. Right. And you go, oh, well, and you're going to laser focus in on that and you're going to go, well, great. That, that's what I really want to do. But you know, what happened? Where did it happen? You're coming off the corner, and why did it happen? Well, you're accelerating better because you were, uh, you know, uh, five miles an hour slower. Uh, of course, the car's going to accelerate a little bit better, right? And uh, so, so uh, that whole "what happened, where did it happen, why did it happen" phraseology that we use is just an, a mental shortcut to all. If you're always thinking that, you walk your way down this path of of data analysis, and that's why we uh, try to share that just as much as we can. And again, the whole focus of this is we are looking specifically uh, at quick, easy performance review and validation. We're not looking into engineering solutions. We're not looking into uh, looking at gearing or aero changes. We're just looking at what the driver is doing with their hands and their feet uh, that can be done better. And every driver does plant those beautiful seeds of flowing brilliance sometime during the session, we're gonna show you how to, how to find that uh, using the split report. But in this particular case, we have more information here. And the more information is actually the engine RPM, the throttle position and brake at the very top. And we can see uh, in the relationship between each of those inputs and its resultant uh, effect on speed. Um, the, the TPS, I, I want everybody to look at that TPS uh, trace. And the reason why is obviously in a lower powered car, it's much easier to fully commit to throttle. But the best drivers that I've worked with and the best drivers, uh, the best uh, analysts uh, are all universal in the fact that the, the original goal for every driver around a closed circuit is to be able to fully accelerate 100% all the way around the circuit. 100% throttle all the way around the circuit. Now, that's a pretty good goal, but that's a pretty good goal. It's not possible. Obviously, <laughs> it's not possible. You have to slow down at some point. And sometimes you have to slow down multiple points. But the issue is uh, our goal if we start at the beginning is 100% throttle. If the wheel is straight or near straight, the throttle is at 100%. That is the number one goal. I mean, that sounds basic, but it's something that a lot of people miss and something that our example uh, data is really made a big improvement on. Once she was aware of it, once the driver was aware of it, 
then all of a sudden the light came on and said, oh, okay, we can do that. But this is a wonderful thing because we can actually also see areas where uh, like uh, in split uh, six or split five, uh, he goes to power uh, on that throttle position and then decides better of it. Says, oh, can't quite do it. We're going to have to get out of it. And, uh, you know, that that is really important to see that the second corollary to if the wheel is straight or near straight, you should be at 100% throttle is you should only go to throttle when you can reach 100% and stay there. Because any sort of breathe at or moderation or mediation of the throttle after commitment to wide open throttle costs not only corner exit, but all the way down the subsequent straight. And so that is really, really, uh, that's why I would say that the number one control input that makes the most difference for most drivers um, after they become more consistent in their brake technique is throttle. So. So, you know, you can tell throttle using uh, GPS longitudinal acceleration, or you can tell it also by TPS. If you have TPS, use it. Let's go to the next slide. Here we're going to get into where Kyle started to talk about. I, we can chat about it here a little bit, but I, uh, we'll dig in even deeper with the live data, obviously. As well, I, I, I do want to talk about what Kyle's talking about too, because again, this is a tool that I use frequently. I mean, I, I think that the theoretical best, so much of what I do as a coach and an instructor is to try to talk people into believing they can do more than what they think is possible. And they look at a fast lap and they look at their performance in that fast lap and they say, that's all there is. But the problem is, that a lap is too large a measure to drill down and look at areas of specific performance. A full lap is dozens, sometimes hundreds on a course, the length of the Nürburgring, Nordschleife, dozens, maybe hundreds of individual decisions and control level, uh, control input actions. If you can improve the quality of each of those actions, you can go faster with less effort. Now, there are some areas where you just get it right, where the car position is correct. You can see the vision is good so that you feel like, hey, I can attack and go. Roger loves that word attack. And I believe that. I think you have to be aggressive to become comfortable being slightly uncomfortable. You, you, you do need to push a little bit. And when you push, very often the best performance comes up, but not always on the same lap. So the purpose of this split report on the top left-hand side is to find and focus on the areas of exceptional performance as indicated by the darkest green splits. And we're going to talk about that more in the live data, but this is a, a, a really crucial part. I saw some discussion about the best rolling lap, which is another good uh, opportunity um, and the uh, best theoretical lap, which may, again, not be practically possible, but certainly provides a benchmark that something can be compared to and measured against. That's all. Next slide. Oh, maybe there we go. Okay. Let's do it. So let's share a different screen. New share. Let's do I, I have to tell people, I mean, I am really excited about this. And the reason I'm excited about this is because honestly, you know, AIM was late to the party with this ability. A lot of other software suites and platforms offer this as a capability, but AIM has such a great penetration into the club, track day, HPDE and club racing market is that it, it was, it was a glaring hole and it was something that interfered with my ability to coach people as effectively as I wanted. And this is the answer, uh, at least for me, and for these quick, simple methodologies to turn people around right away and send them back out so that they can do better. A little background on this particular set of data that we're talking about. And then Roger's going to talk you through uh, the actual physical portion of, of, you know, some of you, I'm sure most of you or many of you are familiar with the mechanics of this, but we're going to do it again for those people who are watching the video later who haven't done this before. 
Uh, it's really important. Um, but the, a little bit of background on this. I worked with a, a, a woman who has uh, a couple of years of track experience. She has a 2015 Ford FP 350S factory built race car. Um, she has a very supportive family. Uh, every one of them races. She uh, is driving and getting her competition license uh, this summer. And, uh, and so it works out really well. And, and um, she wanted to get better, but she was stuck. She, for eight months, she was stuck at a particular lap time, no matter what she did. And what, what people kept trying to say was don't throw it against the wall and hope it sticks. Try to figure out what you're doing and, and probe it incrementally. But she didn't know where to start. And she'd never had anybody sit down with her and take a part uh, her positioning on the racetrack, what should she be doing with her hands and feet? She hadn't gotten that sort of individualized feedback. And so uh, in the afternoon of one day, she uh, was just uh, going marginally slower than her personal best, which was a high 210 uh, at VIR. It's a three and a quarter mile track, uh, you know, a pretty good size track. And then the second uh, time. Um, we talked about it. Uh, we had a lengthy debrief at the end of the day. We had a long talk before she went out the next morning and bang, she went out the morning and blew her personal best away by three seconds. Now, no one is telling you that this is reference level data. I would not look at this information and say, hey, that's what my data should look like. What you should look at is the change um, between the delta, the change and the variance between what she had been doing and what she ended up doing. And we're going to look at several different, we, we talked a bit before, don't make your decisions and your coaching decisions either for yourself or for others based on one measure or even two measures. Try to make them on at least three measures so that uh, I know that that some people watching here and myself included have been led astray by looking at one uh, measure and drawing conclusions from that measure that weren't supported ultimately by other by a close examination of the other measures. That's why we're talking about looking at this from multiple perspectives. Um, yeah, the, this in this particular case, it, P Peter is going to walk you through these two sessions. Uh, from this lady that uh, with a substantial increase again it's is um, is she a top level pro performer uh, maybe maybe not but for most of us that's a no and uh, but the it's a coaching session right what what, what Peter and other coaches do and, and and I think a lot of people don't use the service as much as they should is years of experience uh, and you you pay a fee to to have this person come in and find these areas where you can uh, make these gains and you can go out there and just beat your head against the wall and try and try and try and you don't make gains because you don't know you know you don't know where to go you know the old term uh, practice makes perfect well it doesn't make perfect unless you do perfect perfect practice makes perfect right and uh, so you if you don't know where you the area of improvement is it's very hard and and so I've uh, great that we have occasionally we have folks like Peter come on here that are that are driver coaches that uh, give you some tips on on some things to look at which is what we're going to do today we're going to look at that this 212 session and then we're going to and we're going to study a couple things we're going to talk about the split report and then at the end we're going to throw up this 207 lap that she did later on in the day and and or the next day and then talk about where those improvements were. So a um, couple of things Peter wanted to go through and I just wanted to touch upon real quickly uh, from the technical side of it. We're, we're here, we do not have a test open yet in Race Studio 3 if you haven't played with it before. We were looking at uh, the, 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 the parallel of the test, da test database in Race Studio 2 analysis, right? So we've got all of our sessions over here on the left. And there's two sessions underneath this this weekend's worth of date. And since I clicked on it, we're seeing the two sessions. Uh, and what's really cool about it is this little preview window down below where that. you can see what the lap times were in that session. We still haven't opened the session, by the way, just so it makes this clear. We haven't clicked on this test and opened it, but yet we're looking at the lap times. We're looking at all of the different speed traces and where there, where it's gray here is where there's a lot of noise uh, or difference in speed between, between individual laps. And if you click on a, or hover over a lap here, you can see that lap is highlighted red. 
versus the uh, versus the other ones, or you can hover over here and just see which lap was here at the peak. That was, you know, that that the lap nine was there, and then over here you can see a lot of power right here, right before you ever even open the open the session, um, and then you you've got your data. We, uh, I'm not going to go through the full importation of this, but it's, it is as easy as clicking on the little cogged wheel when you're in here, say you've got your movie file on your SD card and you stick it into your, uh, your, your drive and you want to import that in. You, I would put it into a, onto your hard drive somewhere. I wouldn't run it right off the SD card, but copy it onto your hard drive somewhere in your data folder, come in here, and you have some options, and 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 the number one thing you have to do is you have to import it. And it's we're not going to walk through the entire process, but you you have the opportunity to import a full full folder of data, if you're it's kind of a shortcut, or you can uh, you know, get these files. And in this particular case, I've got the these two files, which is uh, this 0002 and 0004 MOV files in a folder for um, th that I always do it this way for these webinars, uh, you would just select it at this point and click open. That's Ray Studio adding it into the test database and, and doing all the things that it does with it to link things together and do what it does. So the um, um, all of that is 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 done um, in, in, a, uh, in a in a nice cool way, right? So the um, uh, I'm not going to do that because we've already done it. So I'm going to cancel out of that. Do, do, do. Come on, there we go. And uh, so I've already imported these two files in. Then, since we've selected on that particular weekend in the in the left column, which one of these do we want to open? There's been some discussion of of uh, of things that okay, well, how do I get how do I get that test open? Well, there's three or four different ways, but uh, the way that I always do it is I simply just come down here and double click on it. Right? You can click on it in a single way and 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 use some of these tools to to open the test or all that but i just come in and i double click and the test will will uh, will will come out of the database open up and and become uh, you know become open up in in ray studio 3 okay one little thing before we uh before i hand it over to peter to kind of study this is the data this uh, these two video files this mov 002 and 4 i think if i remember right yeah 2 and 4 uh, Peter has ma is making those available to you. They're, uh, they have been linked. Uh, they're zipped up files. They're linked in the chat box. If you're watching this later on YouTube, there uh, the links will be in the description box uh, below. Uh, he also has shared uh, this these user profiles that he has put together to make it look this exact way. So those Ray Studio three user um, um, profiles are going to be available as a link as well, and. Um, uh, and also the presentation that we just uh, showed you in all those steps, the presentation is available for you as a, as a PDF document as well, if you want to download that later. So all of that is there. The, um, what Peter was talking about, and, and then I'll hand it back over to Peter, is uh, we'll, 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 we'll start with, uh, wh where would you like to start, Peter, on the data video or the split time side? Well, let's start data, data video. Okay, so all, um, all you got to do is click on, on that, and then... Uh, as we've seen in James's, a little bit different look and feel here, but here is uh, this, this lady's uh, data and video all coming from just a movie file. We've brought that data in. I'll answer one more question since we're, we were there before, is throttle position. We're seeing her th throttle position here in this graph and uh, because it was included in, a, in the overlay. And we were talking about sampling rates. Uh, by doing it through this method of getting the data where it's not actually going to the logger. If I open up this uh, throttle position, you will see that the sample rate is at six hertz. Six samples per second is what we're grabbing. Now, I am no expert on how the programming and all this works, but uh, I believe what that is, is that's how often the graphical element is being updated onto the, to the video. And, and that is when we're grabbing a sample of that and placing it uh, in, into this data file. So instead of the 20 Hertz that the ECU might be or 10 samples per second, it is slow, slightly reduced in its, uh, in its sampling rate. And the same thing with uh, the, the GPS channels that Tice, uh, Tice was in, in, uh, kind of hinting towards the uh, sample rate of everything is going to be six hertz if you use this process. Not great for absolute 
data analysis and, and working on technology and, and, and scientifically changing some things on the car suspension settings and such, but uh, very, very good for a driver coach to grab it, come over and take a look at it. So I just wanted to cover that, Peter. And, uh, and with that, let's give uh, you uh, the, the, the microphone and let's kind of walk through what you look at from her older session and okay. anything you might want to look at in race studio, and then we'll bring up her faster session after you had a chat with her and, the, and she thought about it overnight. Yeah, that sounds good. And, and I'm just going to share with everyone here my methodology and my way of thinking. Yes, please. Um, one of the things that was evident to me was the first thing I did uh, with her was, uh, and Matt pointed out this very well, uh, this is a track day kit that was put in the car in about 30 seconds and uh, they are really uh, very, very close. Uh, you know, I can get good information. I put it in and uh, plug it in the OBD2, get power oh, okay. and, and get all the information. So the, the most important thing was that I take the video card out and I put the video card in and I watch the video, A, to make sure that it recorded and B, to make sure that I get the information uh, quickly and easily. One of the things that I noticed very, very quickly from her first session was she was going down multiple straights. Um, and I can, uh, if you'll give me the cursor, thank let you. Me, let me try that again here, Peter. There you go. You should be able to click on it and yeah. say go. There you go. Uh, so, so I'm all set. So like, for instance, we would sit here and there is a wide open vista in front of us, a nice open piece of track. Yes, it is a sweeper to the left, but drivers should be fully committed uh, if the wheel is straight or near straight, and it is. There's not a great deal of lateral loading. We can tell that by the friction circle on the right-hand side, but we can also tell that we are pretty low on the totem pole in terms of the <laughs> throttle position. So I didn't have access to any of this information. I just looked at the video and I saw this and I said, well, let's look at this from a lap perspective and the ability to look at it in particular areas and corners. Now, clearly on other areas like the back straight where she had 5,000 feet, um, you know, quite a bit of, of, of room to go and a very quick car, she was able to muster uh, the confidence and comfort to be able to fully accelerate all the way down uh, the front straight, but we also, uh, or the back straight. But we also have situations where a majority of drivers, especially club level drivers, uh, and Kyle, I, I'll talk a little bit more about advanced drivers later. You know, people that are chasing for tents, you, you can definitely find information. All of this works for advanced drivers too. You just have to look harder and you have to zoom harder. This in particular is very easy to see because there are quite a few areas where, uh, you know, the car is going straight ahead. And uh, in this particular, it is a downward slope uh, of significance but uh, which most drivers, uh, especially novice drivers, don't feel comfortable fully committing to throttle. But in any case, uh, it is always better to fully accelerate and brake generally than it is to, uh, you know, partially uh, apply the throttle and then coast down the speed. So in this particular case, things that were jumping out at me were uh, this throttle bar on the video that I reviewed 20 seconds after she got in the car, or got out of the car, uh, showed too much, uh, too many periods of time and too many areas on the track that were less than 100%. So I loaded this up, I popped this in and uh, into the thing. I have a profile here that uh, if I go to this uh, configuration uh, gear right here, and there it is, uh, we can choose the color channel, which is, uh, uh, or, or color per channel. Uh, but I, I did this and then I scrolled, I did a search. I could do a search, but I scrolled down and I can go right down to TPS. I can click okay and bang. Now I have a color um, channel for, uh, and I've tested this and in math channels as well. And even though the sample rate is low and not particularly good, perfect, I can still get reasonable, valuable information from GSUM on this color channel map on the lower left-hand side. So here we have all that we need. We have speed versus distance. We have the main driving driver input uh, to push the forward. And then we have the video on top and then we have the color channel on the left. Now, one of the things that is important to realize 
um, is that the information rendered on the background of the video, there is a latency. There is a short delay between what the driver actually does and how quickly it is rendered on the video. However, there is no latency on the data on the left-hand side other than the sample rate. So the, the, the thing about this is this information is more accurate and timely than the information on the background of the video. That's another reason why we wanna look at the video and the strip chart and the color map uh, so that we can, can take a look at that. You are seeing extraordinarily slow upshifts. You are seeing, uh, in my opinion, a lazy driver, a driver who uh, doesn't really have a sense of um, urgency about it. And, and one of the reasons why I picked these videos is, uh, is primarily to show a big change, but also to show some, some pretty gross measures uh, that can be simply and easily improved. And, and that's, that's why we're here. So I'm going to hand this back to you, Roger. If you just take your hand off the mouse, I, I'll leave it okay. attached uh, to you, but I'll just run it for a minute. The, um, but the, so what the cool part is, is here we've got a, a, a coaching technique, right? Peter's looked at the video, then looked at the data, has noticed some things, had the discussion with the driver, and then we're going to add the second, uh, you know, the next session, right? Uh, and let's see the, uh, our entire uh, sub-series here of, uh, of data analysis techniques or webinars that we're doing. We really are trying to show a session one, what did we see? What did we talk about? What did we approach the driver with? Or in, in my case, if I was driving, it would be me looking at my own data, what makes some change and, and go back out and then have the second data file, bring it in, lay it on top and uh, and then see what the differences are, right? Where did this, where did this um, improvement come from looking at the data? And that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna go back out to our test database. We're gonna go, so the best lap on the one we had to, just had open was a 212. And then as Peter mentioned, uh, she had been at a 210, but uh, she was on the, on that particular test, the best was a 212. Uh, and then she went back out and hit, and hit a 207. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on this one. We're going to open it up. And uh, and now uh, one of the things I like to do, and it's just uh, one of these things, personal preferences, and Peter and I are both used to it. So I try to always make my best lap as, as far as the perlap color type of a setup. I like to make it red and then and then have that second color. You pick what it is, but I'm just going to pick this uh, this bright blue. I think it projects well for, uh, you know, through Zoom and through the webinar part. And then uh, and then study a little bit of of the difference here. And, I'll, and we'll turn it back over to Peter. Peter, but uh, now we've got her best lap from the two different sessions, one a 212, one a 207. And let's look at how her driver her driving method changed and, and have Peter explain it through it uh, of what we're seeing. So I'll tell you very quickly that the less experienced the driver is and uh, the less comfortable and confident the driver is, the more inconsistent their performance is. <laughs> so, you know, I think it's really important to, to see here that there are bits and pieces that are still a huge uh, differential uh, between, uh, you know, uh, the average and her particular exceptional performance. We'll, we'll show that using the split times report in a moment. But in this particular case, I have to tell you that my, uh, you know, my coaching methodology generally provides no more than two goals for the next session. Uh, and in this particular case, for this presentation, the only thing I want to show you is three things. The first thing was uh, that the first opportunity was the ability to use more of the throttle uh, more of the time. And that in particular, you know, even if we have a situation uh, is, is, is we have uh, a lot better throttle, a lot more, maybe not 100%, but double what it was in this short straight uh, between the exit of turn one and the entrance of turn two. Um, that really did make a difference in terms of the time compare. We're almost a second up. Into and nine this miles lap, per hour. Nine miles know, per hour. And, 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 and nine miles an hour. And you know what? Nothing bad happened. Mm -hmm. And by reinforcing the fact that nothing bad happened, she actually did better in other labs. But the other thing that is really cool is um, 
I asked her to be more uh, aggressive with the throttle coming out of slower corners. So in, for instance, here at turn four, uh, she was much, much better uh, about that. And she carried more speed through this slower section, which resulted in a greater uh, time compared gain. Um, this is something that I think is really important that every coach, instructor, and, uh, and driver needs to know. And that is proportionately, you are gonna pick up more time in slower corners because you're gonna traverse those slow corners as a percentage much quicker with just a few more miles an hour. In the faster sections, a few more miles an hour is a small percentage of the total speed. So the focus should be on the slow corners. And in particular, one turn four Oak Tree, which is the southern end of the racetrack at VIR, and the end of the 5,000 foot back straight are the areas where you really need to focus. Now, the next thing that I asked her to do was I, I after I watched the throttle position sensor deficit, I uh, looked at her track position on each of her quick laps and uh, became very clear very quickly that she was uh, yeah, initially, and without a lot of input or preparation, rim shotting or driving around the outside radius of the corner before the slowest corner on the track. And the goal here is actually to drive through here as quickly as you can, as quickly as it takes to slow down for the next corner. And really to do that, you need to get on the inside curbing. So this is before, and this is after right here. So uh, she was able to do that. She was actually able to carry, uh, you know, 10 miles an hour more at the apex. Yeah, look at that. Uh, and, and she didn't feel bad about doing that. You know, a function of the low speed over here is uncertainty. She just didn't have a very clear vision of what she wanted to do. And she asked me that. She said, I'm not sure what to do here. And I said, well, look, this is what I want you to do. She went out and did it. Perfect. So that was the next thing. So, so the first thing I looked at was track position. Oh, I'm sorry. The first thing I looked at was the deficits in throttle position. Second thing I looked at was, uh, was track position. And this is, this is a prime example of that. Now what I'd like to do, Roger, is let's go to the split times report and kill that slow lap. Okay, let me have that back for a second. We'll, uh, let's take the uh, slow test out, right? Yeah, yeah. And we'll get rid of that guy and then we'll go to the split times report. And just, uh, and we've only got a couple minutes, but uh, yep. love, love that we're gonna get a chance to, to look through your way of thinking this through and some of the different tools that are available here. By the way, again, one last time, uh, not last time, but Peter has created this profile and it's a little bit different than the stock uh, split times report. We've We've added a, a, a channel, you know, a, a measures graph down here with with the value, so you can see exactly where you know, where things are, where this green segment number eight is, this green segment here, and and we, he's added a, a map over here that has the segments on it, all for information, so we can just quickly be able to to show the student, the person he's working with, uh, some different things on top of just the actual split report. So, go ahead and click in there anywhere, uh, Peter, and you will have the mouse. Okay, so again, I think one of the things that I was was interested in doing here was trying to find um, trying to find areas of exceptional performance. And actually, Roger, I may have a little question here. So one of the things is, uh, you know, and Kyle talked about this, asked about this, and, and suggested this uh, very early on. But but the the best rolling lap two hundred seven oh six oh. Uh, the actual best lap was a 207.1. Um, one of the reasons why there's not a lot of difference between the best rolling and uh, the best lap is because it included a lot of that, but also because the sample rate or the, the number of really quick laps is relatively low in this sample, yeah. okay? There's just not very many fast laps in this run. What I think is interesting is that there are a number of segments that are quicker um, you know, su some substantially quicker uh, than than in the fast lap, and in particular, we you know we had four tenths right here. Uh, we've got a couple of other things, and and Roger, I'm going to let you drive on that. But um, the the most important thing I want to say is where do you go from here? So this is the, we we talked about throttle position, 
uh, we talked about as, as a deficit just by reviewing the video, not even opening Ray Studio 3 analysis beta. Then we looked into it and we validated that. Then we looked at the video and we did some comparisons in track uh, position to make sure that she did in fact implement the improvement that we suggested. That is really, really important. Lastly, what I wanted to do here was show you that there are areas where she could have done even better and the max, the best theoretical is now below 205. So there's a huge differential between her actual best and her theoretical best. And the thing that blows me away is there's a lot of meat there to chew on. There is, and I, and I know I rushed you through it, but I, I wanna go through two things that, uh, that I think really help Please. looking at this particular display here. Uh, number one is, is we've colorized the, the split report. So uh, slower is red, better is green. And what I like to do is look at the segments and look at the improvement over the run. And this one started red. There was a pretty dark green one here. So it was fairly quick, if, if, if not uh, the fastest. And then, and then it stayed that way. There's a couple other ones where she, where she was fighting, getting the hang of it, you know, segment seven, right? The, this breaking zone down here into Oak Tree. She, she did finally get it, but it took her a little bit longer to get that area. She continued to work on that area. Perfect. And there's some other ones where you know, even on the fast lap, she still wasn't consistent. And you were talking about that quite a bit. And uh, so the colorization is, is a big deal to me. It makes it very visual for the learners that like to learn that way. And then the other thing that I like, I just love about this is this little preview window. Uh, Peter has it where he has some of the other uh, preview windows turned off, and it's just the segment that we're hovering over. In this case, right now, it's se segment seven, and, and it's all of the speeds. And as I take my mouse and hover over the split report boxes, that particular, let's go to the best one here. Let's just hover there. Uh, that blue line over in that right window is showing the the the, the speed trace through that segment. Can and I you ask can you to look at at segment six, because we're going to six, look at that. all you got to do is click on the top, so it makes that the highlighted one, and look at the difference in the <laughs> in the in the in the rates. Right, uh, the, she was very inconsistent in this particular segment, and if we come down to her best segment, you know this thirteen four, let's say, uh, look 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 where it's at the top of most of it, but there during the breaking, they're uh, about one third into the into the segment. There's still some room of improvement there yet. So there's uh, there's all sorts of things that we can look at. And this particular setup of the split report analysis is a very, very, uh, very, very powerful tool. And finally, the last, the third one, and then I'll let Peter take over for a little bit more, is then we've got the number down here on top of it, right? So even if you weren't in the split report and yet you wanted to look at segment seven, these numbers over here are showing your times for each of these different laps. And while her best time was a 14.3 in that, her best lap had her being a 14.3 in that segment, there was a there was almost a second available to you on lap eight, right, in that segment, right? So if we come back up and uh, and we click on that segment again and hover over lap eight, there there is the there is the best, like we talked about a second ago. So you can see it in three or four different places. This is such a powerful tool that I just uh, we didn't want to just go with Peter and do the fast lap of the two different sessions and show what they did, although that being very powerful and very strong, what this was really about, we wanted to dig into this split report a little bit as well. Where where do we so. find more speed? Where do we find even more speed? And, exactly. and that was go. really, really cool about this whole thing. So now, with armed with this information, and I'm clicking. Yep. Go ahead. Here. Okay. So armed with this information that that she did sector six, uh, what uh, nearly a second, nine tenths, a little less than nine tenths, eight, yeah, eight seven nine, five. Yeah. What we're going to do now is we're going to go back to data movies, and we are going to select eight and we are going to go to that particular thing and we are going to look at what she did so and remember remember done. the little trick you can just double click on the six the segment blue strip yep. and zoom in and even have a better even more detailed look yep. at it and i'm waiting on it now and it there is you yep. you're, there you're. it is and so this is really really cool because everything leading up to this matter of fact she was even going a little bit quicker through turn nine which is a very fast very steep uphill when I'm riding a bike on this. It is, I am no biker and I am not certainly any paragon of fitness, but I have to get off and walk it uh, the first couple. It's that steep up the hill. But, but the thing here is 
The speed is exactly the same. The speed is 105.9 miles an hour at the apex of turn nine, no big deal. But what she does is she does this little spike of throttle, which is, which is great. And the reason why she, she did this uh, and it exacted no penalty is she's still in the same position. She's still in the position. And, and all of a sudden she actually accelerates in this short straight, which is what we have tried to get her to do. This is really, really important. And all of a sudden, boom, she's at 10 miles an hour greater uh, just before she decides to hit the brake. And now she is turning in and approaching the apex at uh, 15 miles an hour greater. A, a ton. And then she yeah. gets to the apex and she is 13 miles an hour quicker. So, I mean, the, the beautiful thing about this is she can see it. She can see what she did. She can see the relationship of the control inputs to what she did. She can see how she could do even better and pick up another nine tenths off the 2080, uh, or I'm sorry, 2071, without penalty and without fear. Now, if I wanna make sure that she's gonna be okay, I can go to the exit of the corner, I can click on it and look at it and she's in no danger of running out of road. So I can reaffirm and support and build her confidence in her ability to carry that extra 13 miles an hour through the apex of turn 10, which is a very scary blind corner. And even has another three or four feet available to her, actually. So, so all about the driver coaching, the driver coaching, all about where do I go to work, right? She was she she was lost and she didn't uh, she didn't understand it. We're trying to help with these sessions with your aim bit. If you don't have a coach, where to find those? Which Peter has been very good about showing us, but also the added value of having the coach of being able to jump in there and within an hour being able to isolate out these three different areas where she should go, go give a, give a shot uh, for improvement and, and find them even quicker. So very, very interesting. So I think back, back to you. Roger. Okay. And, I think that's really what I wanted to do was just uh, share with everyone. This is uh, something that takes me no more than five to 10 minutes after each session. I am always validating uh, the best previous session with the, the best from the subsequent session. Um, I am always focused on one or two measures. I am always looking at three different measures, uh, two or three measures to, to validate uh, the picture so I don't run up the wrong tree. Yeah. Uh, but, but realistically, uh, this, is, this was an inordinate improvement and yeah. this would not be possible without a relatively low time student. Uh, I don't work very often with students that are low time. Um, uh, most of the people that I work with have raced and won at the Sebring 12 hour, Le Mans 24 hour, uh, you know, our top level club drivers and, uh, and very accomplished track day drivers. But it was a special challenge to me that worked out. And it worked out because we were able to use effectively this simple, easy technology using only the SD card from the Smarty Cam. A smart cam MOB file. The the um, the, the I think um, I think maybe it was Kyle earlier did mention that that uh, you know there are great gains to be gained here and 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 you made it happen with her. Um, it's low hanging fruit, right? Well, even if you're working with with the, that guy that's uh, that is on pole or race is a professional driver, they're still low hang they're still hanging fruit. It's just not low, right? So you just have to work harder to find that tenth instead of those two, those two or three seconds. It's the same processes. It's just digging in deeper and maybe in slightly different spots and looking, zooming in more, as you mentioned, the, it, it, it's, it is there available for you uh, at no matter what level. The uh, couple of questions before we close out, we're a little bit late already, but, but I just want to get through these, uh, these two questions. Uh, the first one I'll do is, is Kyle ask a question that I thought uh, we, I don't think we've actually hit on very often, but uh, uh, in any of the previous webinars, and he was talking about this preview window over here, and we've got it previewing GPS speed. When you're looking at any, in Race Studio 3, at any of the areas, and you see a, a little cogged toothed gear, 
that is doing nothing but giving you the option of, of changing what's in that, that axis, right? So if you wanted throttle position, I'm not going to do it here because we just don't have the time, but you would click on that, select the different channel, uh, boom, we put throttle position, we would see how it kind of is, and then save it as, as part of your profile. And from then on, uh, throttle position will show up. So whenever you have a, 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 that cog gear, it's, it's giving you options to change things like that. So, uh, so certainly throttle is, is doable that way. Sam asks also, what, um, what is the, uh, uh, can you quickly explain how I import the user profiles? I, I don't think I can at this point. We, we got a little bit of time. It's not, uh, it you is not difficult. It. Yeah, it, it is not too it. difficult, but you would, uh, you would come into the, the profiles and you can load profiles. Uh, so what you would do is take that, uh, that, uh, that uh, ASSJ file, I think is what, uh, what the extension is. It's, it's, uh, it's zipped into the folder. You would bring that onto your computer, uh, save it onto your computer, you would then load a profile uh, by going and uh, 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 grabbing the profiles from here. You would actually grab it from uh, from the all all tab and then go into the uh, um, uh, profiles at this point and and, uh, and import the profile here. Uh, but boom, it's it's there. I think what we will do is include that into one of our webinars coming up where we uh, we actually walk through that stage. I think we've done it once, but uh, I think we should do it again. Okay, perfect. Uh, but it's nice of Peter to share the profiles that he's built. He shared the data, and he and uh, and of course the presentation materials were in the all all linked in the chat. They're all going to be linked in the YouTube video. That um, uh, if, if you're watching this not live, you're going to have those things available to you in the description box below as well. Okay, perfect. Let me re bring up the PowerPoint. And let's kind of close this one out with a little bit more information. Um, uh, as I just mentioned, all of our all of our webinars and other videos that we build uh, go to YouTube right off the bat. Uh, there's the the website if you uh, if you haven't visited, you're here live and you haven't visited the website. Uh, if you go to YouTube and just type in AIM Data, you'll you'll find us. We have 168 videos there right now, um, uh, including all of the uh, 103. Uh, approximately one hour, a little long today, approximately one hour webinars that we uh, have been doing since the pandemic hit. So all of those are available to you. This one will be up uh, uh, within an hour or so of right now. So uh, love doing these and love that we can put them out there and just so many people getting good value out of these, tons of feedback for to all of us uh, of, of the, the information that's been available. So the um, uh, we're a customer support company that happens to sell racing electronics is, is, is something that I like to say. Boy, we're out here to help you and uh, you've invested in, in this hardware or, or your time into the software. And we wanna make sure that's as easy as we can make it for you. So if you see us at the track, make sure you come up and say hi. Uh, we're, we're all visiting tracks all the time. Um, you know, um, Looking forward to the PRI show, something we didn't uh, all get to do last year. Uh, so we'll be there as well. But if uh, if you don't visit us, why we're uh, why we're uh, uh, at tracks, give us a call. We have an 800 number, the tech support line. Give us a call and uh, and 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 get some any information you need to make this uh, these tasks a little bit easier for you. So the um, uh, we always like to announce the next webinar. The next webinar we're going to have uh, has Chloe Lurin coming back and joining us. Um, uh, probably the most feedback I got was from her uh, her motorcycle racing uh, data analysis topic we did about uh, about a month or month and a half ago or so ago. Um, uh, not only from the motorcycle people, but uh, her 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 knowledge and her approach to doing data analysis and and the way she was explaining it uh, was very helpful to our sports car folks and our. Uh, off-road guys and, and other people that are watching this go-kart folks um, very very well received and she's going to come back and, and join us and instead of being a, a basic you know how do we mount it on the bike how do we you know uh, take that data you know just the gps channels and do some things with it she's going to take it to the next level she's going to do what we might call a medium data analysis discussion for the hour uh, next week and then we've already got her scheduled about another month down the road where she's going to come in and do an, a, a deeper data analysis uh, she's a mechanical engineer works in the moto america uh, uh, racing series, uh, one of the top level motorcycle series in the in North America. So she's uh, she's very good at what she does. Uh, glad to have her and looking forward to her being here again next week. So everybody look forward to that.
The um, contact information for Peter and myself, uh, you, got, uh, you got Peter's email address down there. The um, um, lots and lots of information we went over. We, of course, we would love to have maybe a couple hours to do this. We could continue to chat, no doubt about it, but um, thankful that he was able to come on and, and, and do this so far. Peter, is there anything else you'd like to kind of add as we kind of close this up? No, I just, I, I think the most important thing, you know, we, we have a number of extremely talented presenters in this series. And a lot of them, uh, even people who are watching this, uh, Tice, Matt, a bunch of people, James, are all familiar with very uh, valuable and, and, but relatively complicated and time consuming analysis. And I think it's important for a lot of people to realize that uh, there are expedient uh, express ways of looking at information. And this is certainly one of the best ones. And the reason I know that is because it's very effective. And it, I've built a business around this in the last 15 years, using primarily video with data in the same window. And now AIM has knocked it out of the park. And I am so glad that we're able to introduce and I and I know a few of you knew about it before, but uh, there is data hidden in those uh, MOV files. And I think that it's uh, uh, if all you can do is if you're if you've got a customer or, or you yourself, uh, you got your laptop and you, you do want to see that that throttle position trace or that that speed real quickly with your video, pull that card out, bring it over, uh, import it. You've got some basic data if you've uh, if, if you've included it as an overlay onto your Smarty Cam video. So there is a little bit of a setup there, but uh, make sure that you've got throttle break, you know, some of the different things you might want to see. And you've got that data. And I thought that was a pretty cool idea to, to share that general topic, as well as uh, Peter's uh, extraordinary coaching methods and, and talents uh, that we were able to show as well today. So appreciate it, Peter. I appreciate you coming back in for your sixth time. Look forward to your, uh, your, your seventh time coming up. Uh, uh, at, at some point in the in the in the next few months, we'll uh, we'll take this one to the next level. On top of that, yeah, Thank I think you. that'd be fun. That would be fun to do it with a top level driver. Exactly, perfect. I appreciate everybody coming. I hope you enjoyed it. The uh, we look forward to seeing everybody next Tuesday. Have a great weekend, wh wherever your uh, racing uh, adventures take you. Uh, look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Talk to you guys soon.